Uh, let's begin here in the book of Galatians, and then we're going to jump to Romans chapter 1. Um, you know, Jesus, the Bible says he never taught anything to the multitudes except by parables. And of course, we know a parable is an illustration, an example, um, object lesson, you might call it. And uh, so the last couple of Sundays, through the years, I've used different object lessons. I remember one time I was talking about sheep and goats because we had a pet and zoo, and I had a, a, a sheep up here and a goat up here. And I was uh, preaching, the goat just let loose, <laughs> you know, just manure everywhere. You know, it's a good thing they were pellets, you know. So uh, other time, another time I had a turkey, and uh, that turkey got loose in the sanctuary. We had lots of fun time. Remember those days, Donnie? So I've done illustrations through the years, and... Uh, uh, but I, I, I want to talk about an important issue. We're living, we understand we are, we are in very, very dangerous times. And uh, perilous days. And, but in those times, God is still with us. Jesus said, Father, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but you keep them. You keep them. And we've been talking about what is the plan, the purpose what is God what God began with a plan in Genesis chapter 1 God didn't change his plan let us make man in our likeness and our image and that was always God's plan and that is God's ultimate plan and what do you have to do with this plan so I just want to read some basic scriptures in Galatians chapter 5 take a look here in verse 16 and listen now remember this is talking to born again spirit filled Holy Ghost people these are not sinners these are saints uh, but the enemy got in there and messed with their heads. He messed with their hearts. And matter of fact, Paul said uh, in Corinthians, he said, I'm afraid lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. So notice what it begins here in verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not what? You will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. See, the lust is in your flesh. Matter of fact, it said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, uh, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. And then he says, Let no man say when, this is James, let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot tempt any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. So when Adam committed sin in the garden with his wife, listen, the seed of lust or desiring things that are against the will, the nature, the purpose, and the plan of God got into the human flesh. It's in the human flesh. Now, the good news is uh, that once we leave this earth uh, and we will eventually get glorified bodies. Now, when you first die, your soul and your spirit ascends to heaven. But you, your old body just goes back to the dust of the earth. But the day will come when the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ shall rise first and in which we shall alive and remain shall be caught up together. That's what the Bible says. And then you'll get a glorified body just like Jesus has right now. And never again will you be tempted, tested, or tried. I say praise the Lord. But while we're in this world, we're going to be tempted, tested, and tried. And the thief comes, what? To do what? To steal, kill, and destroy. So he said this, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So the only way to overcome the lust of the flesh is in the spirit. Uh, the, the spirit of Christ, the spirit of faith, the spirit of God. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. So if you wonder what in the world is this conflict going on inside of me, and it's every one of us, every one of us are fighting a battle right now against our flesh, our, our flesh. And matter of fact, that's why Jesus gave the illustration, and he didn't mean it literally, but remember, he only taught by parables or stories. He said, he said if, if your hand offends you, cut it off. For it's better for you to enter into heaven missing a hand than it is for you to go into hell with both hands. If your eye offends you, pluck it out. For it's better for you to go into heaven with one eye less than to go into hell with both eyes. Now, he wasn't saying if you cut your hand off and if you pluck your eye out, that then you'll be okay. What he was saying is the problem is in your flesh. It is in your flesh. And it happened when Adam and his wife committed sin. It got into the flesh of man. 
And it says, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. Now, in Romans chapter 7, a lot of people try to tell you, well, when Paul was talking about the things I want to do and I can't do, and the things I want to do, the things I don't want to do, I do them. That, he, was, he was a sinner. No, he wasn't. He was a saint. The book of Romans was written to the believers and the saints in Rome. So, but then he tells us when he gets to this long line of that he can't do the will of God, he says this, thank God through Jesus Christ, I have the victory. Our victory is only found in Jesus, period, people. Our victory is only as you look to Jesus Christ. So it's not really some formula. Uh, it, it's spiritual laws, but we've got to look to Jesus. He's our wisdom. He's our strength. He's our righteousness. Remember, Jesus was tempted in every way as we are, yet without sin. Jesus, not for one nanosecond in his whole life, this is amazing, ever got out of the will of God. His thoughts were never out of sync with the Father. Everything he said, everything he did, everything he thought... Every aspect of his life was sinless. Never committed sin. Anything that is not of faith is sin. Not one thing that, now that same Jesus who has been raised from the dead, he now lives in me. Say he lives in me. You got to get that. He's inside of you. But if you don't look to him, if you don't trust him, if you don't lean upon him, if you don't depend upon him, if you don't recognize he is the only one that can get you to the other side, you're not going to make it. I don't care what preachers say. And matter of fact, Paul, this, he's talking to born-again, spirit-filled Christians. These are people he had led to the kingdom. And he said, have I labored in vain if it be yet in vain? Because Judaizers got in here and began to get people caught up in the works of, what, feast days, holy days, new moon days, Sabbath days, physical circumcision, the keeping of the law. And, and, and the law cannot justify nobody. So it wasn't the keeping of the law, it was by faith in Christ that gave them victory over the flesh. Say victory over the flesh. See, what we're preaching about is the spirit versus the flesh. And, 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 this, and, and whether you know it or not, this is the battle that we are all involved in. Your spirit against the flesh. And he goes on to say, notice what he says uh, in the very next verse. He says, but if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Then it gives us 18 categories of the work of the flesh. Now, the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Adultery. And, and you can look this up in the Amplified or different versions of the Bible. Because some of these words are, are, are archaic and we don't understand them in our vocabulary. But th these, these are things that are extremely dangerous that can be in a believer's life. And if they are in your life and you don't deal with them, you will not make it to heaven. This is what Paul said. So when somebody tells you all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, you're good to go no matter what you do. I'm telling you right now, you need to run for your life. Because that's not what Paul the Apostle said. Notice what he says here. Now the works of the flesh are manifested, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft. You know, uh, uh, disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft that tells us in the Old Covenant. Hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Now listen, he's talking to Christians of the which I tell you before. As I have also told you in time past, listen, I've told you this before, I'm going to tell you once again. How, how many have ever told somebody something over and over and over because you loved them, because you cared about them, because you were concerned about them? He said, as I, has off, off, as, I has, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things, those who are living these kind of lifestyles, shall not inherit the kingdom of God, period. You will not inherit the kingdom of God unless you repent of these things. And you look to God to get free. You got to be free. A lot of pastors won't tell you this because they're afraid of losing people and finances. Listen, I, I, I have the fear of the Lord in me. 
uh, the Bible says, warn the wicked of his wicked way or his blood will be on your hands. So I'm telling you in love, Paul told these people, this, this is the very last thing that Paul told the Galatians. And then he says, but the fruit of the Spirit, say the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and actually the Greek says faithfulness, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. For in other words, you're free to have all the fruits of the Spirit you want. All the love, all the joy, all the peace. Now remember, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. What did the thief come to do? When Adam and his wife were, I mean, Adam, yes, Adam and his wife were created. They, and, and I illustrated last week that your life is like a grocery cart. Your life is like a grocery cart. And the day that I die, I'm going to stand before the Lord with my grocery cart. And God's going to judge me according to what's in my grocery cart. And if I have any of these 18 categories I just went through in my life, now I'm not talking about I'm sinless, I'm saying that I'm practicing adultery, fornication, uh, idolatry, which is covetousness. If I am pract- if I'm a liar, if I'm a thief, if I'm a murderer, if I'm infeminate, the Bible says. Yeah, that's what it says. It says, I will not inherit eternal life. And so I don't think the church, that's, why do you think John the Baptist, the very first thing he did was preach, repent. Now, uh, uh, up behind me, I have a one side, and these I'm going to consider works of the flesh. These are all works of the flesh. No, they're, they're not. It's just natural food. But it's just, we're going to call that works of the flesh, and we're going to call this the characteristics and the fruits of the Spirit. Now, you, when you go grocery shopping, you decide what store you want to go shopping in, and you begin to fill your cart with what you want, whether it be healthy or unhealthy. You, you know what I'm talking about? I, I know my family, and I, I'm not, that's not a part of salvation, really. It's, it's, uh, but the Bible says we should take care of our bodies, and, uh, you know, many times I haven't ate healthy. And uh, so in our family, it's not our gospel. We have really decided we're going to eat healthy. And thank God all of us are beginning to lose weight because we decided, you know what? We need to lose, we need to lose this excess weight because it's very detrimental to my physical health. Well, listen, you're putting the wrong stuff in your cart. It's very detrimental to every part of your life. It's not just the fact that if you die with, with, with uh, things in your cart that God says don't put there, because there's things we can have in our cart that's against the will of God, but it won't endanger our souls. You all know that. There's lots of things we can have in our cart, uh, you know, uh, that won't endanger our soul. But every time we get out of the, every time we put something in our cart that is out of the will of God, it's giving place to the devil. And the Bible says, give no place to the devil. Now, it says, Paul said, we are those who are not ignorant of his devices. Excuse me, we shouldn't be. We got a Bible. We should not be ignorant to the devices of the devil. But I'll give you an example. When I, when I got born again, I just had this knowledge, this understanding. For me, it's not that the, the, the TV itself is evil, but the TV is just so, so full, so full of filth and wickedness and ungodliness. And the Bible says, put nothing wicked in front of your eyes that we never had a TV in our house. We would not have a TV in our house because for, basically I didn't trust my own flesh. I just didn't trust my flesh. I just, I know, Jesus said this, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, and, and I know that if I let something into my eye gate, into my ear gate, it's going to eventually get into my heart and it's going to control the decisions I make. And, 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 and every time I've made a wrong decision is because I let something into my eye gate and my ear gate and I allowed it, you know, Brother Hagen used to say, uh, you know, the birds can fly over your head, but don't let them build a nest in your hair. So he, he, he goes on to say this. Now listen, the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and against such there is no law. And, 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 and then it says, listen, uh, if we live in the Spirit, oh, in verse 24, very crucial. And they that are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh. With what? With the affections and lust. That's your job. 
That's your, now your job isn't to crucify your neighbor or your loved one. Your job is to take care of your flesh. I've discovered that's more than enough job for me. I mean, I, I've got to, you know, I've, now some of you got more flesh than me, but I don't think that matters. We got to deal with our flesh. I don't, you know, now when my children are little, it's my responsibility to raise them in the way they should go. And I'll talk about that. And it says, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, Paul himself said in Galatians 2, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that lives within me. In the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So Paul, when he says, I crucified my flesh, he, he said, I cruci- I'm crucified. He's, talking about, he's not talking about the part of you that is, is advantageous or, or profitable or beneficial. or No, he's talking about the part of you that is against the will of God. It don't smell like God, it don't talk like God, it don't look like God, it don't act like God. That part of me that's in my flesh, I need to crucify it. I need to mortify it. And if some preacher's telling you that you don't have to mortify your flesh, you're not listening to a servant of God. What do you think the devil told the woman? You can disobey God. And you'll be okay. How many know that's how the whole human race got into the mess it's in? Well, I'm, I'm crucified by faith with him. Well, good. That means then the works of the flesh. If you are really, because faith without works is dead. So if you really are crucified with Christ, then we will see the evidence of it. Matter of fact, Jesus says in the Beatitudes, he says that even if, you're, if you can get to the place where you're so crucified, where somebody just up and slaps you in the face. Just for maybe no good reason. You're not a pacifist. It takes faith to do this. They slap you in the face and you just turn the cheek. And you don't get bitter. You don't get resentful. You don't get ugly. You don't get mean. You don't. I remember right after I got born again. And I didn't realize what I did. But I, I dumped all the garbage out of my cart at, at, as much as I knew that was in it. At that time, of course, I didn't know it right away. But uh, things that were still in my cart that were hidden from me. Unless God reveals it to you, you don't know what's in your cart that's wrong. Uh, I told you some years ago, my, my wife and kids were telling me I had some issues. I just didn't believe them. I just didn't. I really did. Because it says, be doers of the word and not hearers, only deceiving yourself. I deceived myself into thinking I was more spiritual than I was. You know, most people, they deceive themselves into thinking they're more spiritual. Listen, I've dealt with husbands and wives, and they were both carnal, but both of them would come to me and attack their mate because of their lack of spirituality. And I'm thinking, why don't you, hey, listen, hon, listen, brother, you need to look in the mirror. Because while you're so busy thinking your husband ain't spiritual, your wife ain't spiritual, you've got some real issues because by their fruits you'll know them. And see, the devil loves you to do this, and that's why Jesus said, listen, if you see your brother with, a, with, with, with something in his eye, pull the beam out of your own. And so I, I, I finally, out of just, I wasn't sincere, I got, went to my office one day, put a piece of paper down, and I said, Lord, if I've got, and I didn't know I was saying this, I said issues, but I said, Lord, if I got anything in my cart that's not of you, will you please show me? And it's like he took my hand and began to write. And write, and write, and write, and filled up that whole page in the other side. I went, whoa, God, I, I, I didn't know I was such a mess. He said, you never asked me before. <laughs> I'm going to tell you again. No, you say, God, show me what's wrong with brother so-and-so. He ain't going to show you that. The devil will talk to you. But if you say, God, show me what's wrong with me. Where am I missing it? A- am I out of your will? And, and right now, Man, my heart goes out to this generation. Back 25 years ago, we didn't have cell phones, per se. We didn't have the internet. We, didn't, we couldn't download garbage day in and day out. Now we are just bombarded by a flood of iniquity, people. And, and, you're, and we're going to have to rise up in faith. This is not a message just for you. This is for the body of Christ. We need to rise up in faith and begin to pull everything out of our cart that is not of God and begin by faith to take a hold of what is God. The fruits of the Spirit. I mean, for one thing we never talk about. So by faith, let's say this is holiness. I've got to grab holiness. The holiness of God by faith. 
I will live a holy life. I'm not talking about the length of your sleeve shirts or the length of your dress or the length of your hair. I'm talking about the condition of your life. I will be holy as he is holy. I will put holiness. Now, true holiness doesn't go around and look at others and say, oh, you're not holy. My wife and I one time were visiting a brethren couple. And, um, uh, uh, they, they, you know, they're holiness people. And uh, the wife was sick. Well, my wife had just got her hair cut, and she was wearing uh, loose slacks. And we went into the house, and the woman right away uh, attacked my wife and said, You're a Jezebel, didn't she, honey? You know how we responded? We responded because guess what? We had the love of God in our cart. We didn't care if she thought my wife and called my wife a Jezebel. We said, Okay, we understand, sister, where you're coming from. But will you let us pray for you? Will you let us, and she did, praise God. And when we left there, we had sweet fellowship. But see, if, 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 we, would have had, if we would have had things in our cart that didn't belong there, we would have got offended. We would have got bitter. We would have got angry. We would have attacked her back. So right after I got born again, my cart was basically emptied, and I'm trying to win people to Jesus. And there was a guy by the name of Tuck. Tucker and he was a big Texan he was a bull rider and the guy carried a 44 magnum around with him and he was a big guy and one night he came up drunk he was mad because I was winning his friends to the Lord and back in them days they called me tooth I know that's ridiculous it's in my books because I was missing my front one of my front teeth is a peg tooth because my brother knocked it out when I was a little kid and I, I they I didn't have no tooth at that time and he called me tooth and so he he he, he called me out into the common area and and he began to, uh, uh, he, he literally picked me up. This guy, his hand was as big as my face. And he grabbed me by the throat and he picked me up with his left hand. And he took his right hand and he said, Tooth, if you don't promise, and he's cussing and swearing and he's yelling. So everybody comes out in the local surrounding uh, rooms. He said, if you don't promise to stop preaching to my friends, he said, I'm going to pulverize you. Well, at that moment, guess what was in my cart? Nothing but faith, nothing but love. And my, my heart broke for him. And I said to him with tears running down my face, I said, Tuck, I said, you go ahead and you do what you have to do, but I'll never stop preaching Jesus. And he started trembling like a leaf, I mean, just uncontrollably. And then all of a sudden he just let me down. And they, all the guys are standing there staring, you know, because they never, and because none of us knew any Christians. Isn't that amazing? When I was in ADAC, Alaska, all of those military guys, when I was growing up, I didn't know any true Christians. So they might have been Christians, but their cart was so full of the world that I couldn't tell they were Christians. I mean, this, is, this has been an epidemic for many, many years in America. Uh, Jesus said, listen to this. He said, by your love for one another, they will know you are my disciples. Y you know, there are some families I've met where you get around the husbands and wives, and you know what, I don't, if, if, if you've been married 40, 50, 60, 70 years, it doesn't automatically make you gentle and kind and meek and loving and forgiving. But you know, you get around some couples, and it's like they've been Christians, tongue talkers, been married for 50 years, and they're at each other's throats. Where, where is Jesus in that? See? And, and, and so what I'm saying is Jesus came to change our, our, our whole Attitude, And so go here to Romans, please. Romans chapter 1. And in Romans 1, 7, it reveals to us, he's talking to saints in Rome. I just want you to know this is for Christians. Um, I, I know one time we had a preacher up here preaching. And, and my children, they, they know, they know the truth. They're not deceived by the modern day gospel. They're not saved by what we call the greasy grace message. Because they read their Bibles. And we had a preacher that had been here, and he preached a little bit of what we're going to call once saved, always saved. And not too bad, just a little bit of a touch taste in here. Uh, and so uh, I talked to him a little bit about it. Well, actually, my, my daughter talked to him about it, just asked him a question. Well, the next time he came, it was pure Calvinism, just pure. I had so many visitors. I normally, because I had so many visitors, I normally would go up, because I've done it, and I'll take the mic from the speaker, because I'm accountable what's being preached here, and I'll say, brother, God bless you, but no, I won't say God bless you. I'll say, brother, you're done. Have a wonderful day. And I'll take the mic away from him. Well, this time I didn't. But this guy, he began to tell people, wow, when he wrote the book of Romans, it wasn't to the Christians. Yes, it was to the Christians. 
when he wrote, the, he wasn't talking to Christians when he quoted Galatians 5. Well, yes, he was talking to Christians. Because we're in a battle, people. The thief's coming, and what is the thief coming to do? He's trying to rob your commitment to Christ, your hunger for Christ. Your, your, if you have any of the fruits of the Spirit in your heart, gentleness and meekness and long-suffering and holiness, I think the devil's done a, 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 he's done a, a, a good job at ripping true holiness out of the church. He's ripped the fear of the Lord out of most believers' hearts. And yet, do you know what Paul said? Knowing the fear of the Lord, or knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. It says, working out your salvation with what? Fear and trembling. It's not this, this, this haughtiness, I'm good to go, I pray to prayer. I mean, I could tell you a well-known speaker that probably most of you really, really like, and I'm not on the crusade against speakers. I heard him, he was on our radio station. He literally said that um, a, a Christian a born-again, tongue-talking Christian could be in bed. He said this online with a married woman having a, 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 a sexual relationship with her. If he would die in the act of it, he would go to heaven. Yes, yes, he said he would go to heaven. I was so upset. Now, a, a lot of the stuff he teaches is right on when it comes to faith and it comes to believing and it comes to prosperity and it comes to healing. It's, 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 it's right on. But listen, man, that is so dangerous. That's the devil. Taking, just ripping the fear of God out of you. Well, hey, did you hear that? Uh, he just... Listen, it's not true. They that do such things. But pastor, what if repent? Oh yeah, repent. Acknowledge it. Forsake it. Cry out to help. Say, God help me. But you got to come out. You got to come out of the darkness. You, 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 can't, you can't say you're following Jesus and walk in darkness. And, and, the, and, and the first thing you got to do is just acknowledge it. I, God, I am not where I need to be spiritually. I've got things in my cart that don't belong there. Now help me get them out. So notice in verse 18, chapter 1. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against what? All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth. Hold the truth. They do what? In unrighteousness. They know the truth but they're still living immoral. They know the truth. Well, jump here to verse uh, uh, 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, and maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers. Do you know I know born again, I've had them come here, people who spoke in tongues, that when you get together with them, they believe Abortion is okay? No, wait. I'm telling you right now, if you embrace abortion as it is okay, you got murder in your heart. I, I'm just, I'm just going to hit, I'm just going to hit these areas because to me it's so bizarre. I don't know if you know this, for the last 20 years, they've been giving people what we call a final dose. What is a final dose? A final dose is when the old person is getting close to death and they mix morphine and some other kind of drug together and they put them down like an old dog. That is murder. I know born again nurses who are giving the final dose to people. They're murdering people. That's how far we've come, people. We have gone so far and I'm not attacking these people. They've been deceived. What do you think sin does? The Bible says in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If peradventure God will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. They, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Who are taken captive by him at his will. That means when we believe a lie. See what's the very first thing the devil fed to the woman in the garden. Now her, her cart. Her cart was full of innocence and purity. And, and, and she had the care, the nature of God in her. Adam and his wife had the nature of God. And so all it took was for the devil, one thing. He took one thing out of the work. He fed her a lie. Now, she didn't have to take it. He fed her a lie. 
she grabbed the lie, dropped it into her cart, and death came to the human race. Jesus came. People say, God loves me just the way I am. Well, let, let's clarify that. What do you mean just the way I am? For in other words, if right now, if your basket, and I'll pick it up tonight because I can hardly just, I can just barely, if this is important for you, you can watch it tonight or come back. But the cart, listen, when I got saved, my cart was full to overflowing with works of the flesh. But when I experienced Jesus Christ, I repented. My cart was turned upside down. Now, there were some things that stayed in my cart. I didn't know where that was in there, and God understands that. The Bible says, confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And it says, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him it is sin. So there's things people are involved in they really don't know. They don't know better, okay? That's completely different. But what I'm saying is that he okay, offered her a lie, said, hey, you can eat that tree, and you'll be okay. And when he, she bought that lie, it opened up Pandora's box. And that's the problem. Jesus says, you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Make you free. So I heard the truth as a, before I got saved. In my heart, I don't know how I heard it, but Jesus was the answer for my sin-filled, messed-up life. I believed on Christ, and I put Jesus in my cart. Now, Every child and every human being, when they're born into this world, they have something in their cart. It's called faith. Every human being is born with faith. He lighteth every man that cometh through the world. Matter of fact, Jesus said this about children. He said, unless you become like a little child, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You will not enter. Now, listen, let me just say this, because as we get into more nitty gritty stuff here. Don't be going into your neighbor's cart, your wife's cart, your husband's cart. Your job is not to be standing and leaning on the door uh, way into your wife's or husband's office and making sure they're lined up with God's word. That, that is legalism. You, they, that's their responsibility. You can pray. How many know prayer works? Don't we believe in prayer? We, we, oh, by the way, we do for the next month. We have prayer, all night prayer, every Friday night starting at 6. At 9 o'clock at night, all night prayer. If you want to come and pray for an hour, two hours, or all night, you can come and pray. And then we have that, you know, for the next. And then the last Friday of every month after March. After March. Okay. So anyways, so everybody has faith. Everybody, ha every child has faith. And Jesus, another thing a child has, and I don't want to get the works of the flesh mixed up in the works of the spirit, so let me put this back here just for a moment. And, and, and so it, it says that another thing a child has is innocence. A child has innocence. And, and, and the thief wants to rob that innocence. And, and you know, I'm just going to be, if you've got... Because one of the number one ways the devil robs our children from innocence is we have within our cart, here we go, we have within our cart secular entertainment as Christians. And we put that in our children's cart. I did it. Not through a TV, but through movies I brought home from Blockbuster and stuff. Ch family movies, I thought they were okay. They weren't. Because guess what? Once you get one movie, you want another movie. And then you want another movie. And then you want another movie. And before you know it, you're filling your little girl, your little boy's cart full of violence, usually cussing, sex outside of marriage. It just comes now. Homosexuality. And next thing you know, your, your little poor child, little Susie, little Johnny, their cart is filled with stuff that would damn their soul to hell. And then one day you come along and say, hey, uh, Johnny, Susie, uh, I know you're a teenager now. See, I never introduced my children, at least, to the secular music world. I introduced them. My daughter tells me one of the most frightful things she can remember as a little girl is I brought home the stupid movie E.T. She said, Dad, that terrified me. I put a spirit of fear 
and my daughter, Stephanie. And I repented over and over and over. Because you get your children addicted to the flesh. Your flesh don't need a lot of help. It easily gets addicted. And I'm not hearing this message. This ought to be being preached in every pulpit of America. Come out from the midst of her and touch not the unclean thing. I'm not talking about being politically spiritual policemen here. I'm not talking about digging in into your life. Because my Bible says a wicked man digs into the sins of another. I don't dig in nobody's sins. I just, I am called of God to tell you this is a serious fight. And you're only going to win it by the Holy Ghost. And, and, and it says, listen what it says here. Being filled with all of this stuff. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Isn't that everywhere now in the, in the church of God? Without knowing the judgment of God, who knowing, listen, who know, listen, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. I, I heard a true story. This uh, pastor's wife, they had two or three children. She got involved with uh, another man. Would God forgive that? Yeah, but listen what happened. So one day, this guy shows up at their house. Now, I mean, she's a pastor's wife. She's packing her clothes. She, and as she goes out into the driveway with her suitcases, putting them in this man's car, the children are weeping and wailing. The husband is weeping and saying, honey, please, please don't leave me. I love you. I need you. Please don't go. But guess what happened? She was without mercy. She had no natural affections left. A born-again, tongue-talking woman her heart had become so hard, she just got in the car and drove away with that guy as her three children and her husband stood there who wailing and weeping because sin hardens the heart. We're in trouble, people. We're, the, the church in America is in trouble. Judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the wicked and ungodly find themselves? Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Look down here in verse 6 of chapter 2. Who will render to every man, say every man. He will render to every man according to his deeds. To them who by patient continuance doing what? continuance in Hebrews chapter 10 it talks about that if you're faithful to the end it says it says they that endured to the end in Matthew 24 25 Jesus said he that endured Paul said I beat my body black and blue lest I myself become a castaway now I'm talking to many Christians who have been has swallowed the lie hook line and sinker that once you're born again once you're saved you're always saved let's use the word saved okay because I don't believe you, you you become on born again you walk away from God. No one falls away from God. We walk away from God by the choices we make. Look at how many people have walked away from the gathering of the church. And yet Paul declared, and I got a book back there, it says 30 reasons why we must gather. And the devil has deceived pastors, first of all, for shutting down their buildings, shutting down the assembly, I had decided that I, I'm, I'm going to gather if people come or not, and if I go to jail, I'll just have a prison ministry. I had a meeting with my family, and I told them that when this stuff started happening. And, and I'm not, uh, it's not about my First or Second Amendment rights. It's about the fact that the Bible tells me to gather. And so I said, I am gathering. You all want to come if it's just me and my family? Yeah, but what if, what if, what if? Okay, I, I know a woman who used to come to church here. She won't come here to church no more. She got born again here. She got filled with the Holy Ghost here. And her husband would come here once in a while, and her husband forbade her to come to the church at, at the beginning of the COVID. And guess what happened? She said she'd cry on the phone with me, and she'd, she'd weep. She said, Pastor, I want to go to church, but my husband won't come. Well, because he thinks you're all going to spread COVID, but he goes to Walmart every day. No, true. Goes to Walmart Every single day. Now, if you want to wear a mask, that's fine. I have nobody's, no one's ever attacked anybody for wearing a mask here. Uh, but you know what? I said, I'm not, I'm going to do it God's way. 
People are afraid of persecution. People are being afraid of, 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 of repercussions. Uh, but you know, I didn't read that in Galatians chapter 6. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Talking to Christians, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And if, if, if you as a Christian, you're putting things in your cart that you know are out of the will of God, you are in trouble. You're opening a door for the devil. Now, now here, I'm not saying that smoking will send you to hell. It'll make you smell like you've been there. But my sister Debbie, you know, my whole family were smokers. We'd sit around our table at 12 years old, and we all smoked Winston's. When I started smoking Raleigh's, they thought something was wrong with me. And it looked like the glory cloud. My brother Dennis, my sister Debbie, my dad, me, my mom, Shirley. And, uh, but when I got born again, I was, I was doing three packs of cigarettes a day. It got ripped right out of me. Boom. Chewing tobacco got ripped right out of me. And I didn't go around on the crusade trying to get people to smoke, stop smoking cigarettes. But my sister Debbie came to me one day. She used to be one of our secretaries. And she said to me, she said, Mike, will you, will you pray I won't get cancer? And it came up out of my heart. I said, Debbie, I'd love to pray for you not to get cancer. I said, but you need to repent of smoking. I said, that stuff is so harmful for you. It's so destructive. You need to repent for smoking. And you, you, need, you need to stop it. Well, she never did, and she died from cancer. We, we opened the door to the devil, people. I had another woman that had a terrible addiction to smoking, and I don't know why, just one Sunday she was up here, and I laid my hands on her, and I, I, I you know, I only do, you get so, and, and I said this, I said, Lord, the next, every time she smokes a cigarette, let her get so sick, she can hardly stand it. Well, that week she called me up. She was so mad. She said, Pastor Mike, I can't smoke a cigarette ever since you laid your hands on me. I get so sick, I can't stand it. Listen, now, we all laughed. She never came back to this church again. You know why? Because people love their sin. We get addicted to it. I mean, really, it's very dangerous, people. And it says... Here in, uh, in, in verse 6 of Romans chapter 2, who will render to every man according to his deeds? Every man. Say every man. Amen. This is written to Christians. This is written to Christians. And it says, to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor, immortality and eternal life. What are we seeking for? Glory and honor, immortality and eternal life. But unto them that are contentious are those who want to argue this stuff and do not obey the what? The truth. But obey on righteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon what? Every soul of man that doeth evil. Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Verse 10, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentiles. Verse 11, listen to it again. Paul says, for there is no respect of persons with God. No respect of persons, people. None. So if I as a Christian, now when I repent of all in my heart, I repent. Now we're having a lot of people pray prayers of salvation with no repentance. None. They're not saved. They're not saved. You, you, you got to, it says, working out your salvation with fear and trembling. I'm not judging their hearts. You, they're going to stand before God. And I, I could come over here. Let me just take these works of the flesh out. We should. Let me do it this way, though. I got faith. But my cart is full of flesh. Now, there's works of the flesh that won't damn your soul. But right now, a work of the flesh is fear. Like I said, there's, I, 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 I could take us, and we don't have time. We could talk about, you know, I could talk about 30 wonderful qualities that God has that I need to acquire. His love. His joy. His peace. 
his long suffering, his gentleness, his goodness, his meekness. You know, a child is meek, they're teachable. His humility, right? His faithfulness, his patience, his self control. See, that's one thing that I think we're really missing in the body of Christ is a lot of self control. By faith, in the name of Jesus, I guarantee when a temptation comes to you that you know is against the will of God. Gossip. People got gossip. Christians, you know, one of the number one things that destroy churches is bitterness and gossip. Bitterness and gossip. And Christians have bitterness. And it says, if you don't forgive, you got unforgiveness in your cart, you will not make it. Jesus said that. Who said it? Jesus said, if you don't forgive, neither will my Father forgive you that's in heaven. How many know there's nobody in heaven with unforgiveness in their heart? Well, Pastor Mike, the minute I die, the unforgiveness is gone. No, no, you got to choose. Do I want to retain this bitterness in my heart? And maybe the person who did you wrong, and that, that is a whole, it, it was terrible what they did to you. I understand that. But you know what they did to Jesus was way, way worse than what they did to you. And he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So, sister or brother, if you don't get that unforgiveness out of your cart, you're not going to make it. I'm telling you what. I'm just, the day will come when you thank me for this message. Right now, you might not, because this whole society, the church has been swallowed up. And if we're watching movies that have sex and violence and murder and perversion in it, don't think you're okay. Because Jesus said, if you even look upon a woman to lust after her. Well, I'm lost and I'm lost. Well, that's a good beginning. Acknowledge you're in trouble. Then what do you do? I said, but I can't stop it. Only by Jesus can you. But I really believe What's really missing right now is what we call the fear of the Lord. Back in about, oh, 1999, I was still living up on the hill. That's another story. I had my message all prepared Sunday morning. I'm in my uh, kitchen, and I heard the voice of God. And he speaks to my heart, and he says this to me. He says, son. Oh, okay. Because he doesn't speak to, I mean, he leads us and guides us. He says to me, why did the devil fall? I said, and I, well, because he wanted to be God. He asked me again, why did the devil fall? I said, well, he wanted to be God. And so the third time he asked me, I knew I wasn't giving him the answer he wanted. I said, Lord, I don't know. You tell me. He said, because the angels of heaven had never seen my wrath, my anger, and my judgment. At that time, hell didn't exist. And then he said this to me. The reason why the devil rose up against God, he thought all that God was was love. God's just pure love. He wouldn't punish me. He won't, you know, bring judgment. He didn't know God had judgment. He didn't know that God. But now we have no excuse. Look at the days of Noah. The Bible says as it was in the days of Noah, it will be at the end. What? People full of violence, full of wickedness, full of perversion, full of unforgiveness. Uh, they, they, they're, they're, they're despisers, they're gossipers, they're backbiters. They, 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 no kindness, no gentleness, no meekness, no humility, no love, no truth in them. You know, well, what would get this stuff out of me, Pastor Mike? Faith? And truth. Get them together. Believe what God said. Take your Bible and say, I believe. Grab your Bible right now. Hold it up. And say, I will believe what God's word says. Now, the New Testament is good enough. There's a lot of truth in the Old. It's all truth, but there's different dispensations. But this is what God, be not deceived. God's not mocked. You say, Pastor Mike, I might have to get the internet out of my house. Well, go for it then. Get it out. Just get it out. You can't handle it. Now, you can, I, I use the internet to spread the gospel. But you can't handle the internet. Get it out. Now, you know, because I went to hell, I cried out and I said, Lord, let me experience it. And you ought to read my book when I went to hell. 
And I said, Lord, let me know the pain, the agony, and the sufferings of those in hell that I can have compassion on them. And I was dropped into hell for two and a half hours. And let me tell you right now, people, I don't ever want to go back. I mean, I already had the fear of the Lord, but that really put the... Now, how many know you can fear the, lose the fear of God? I began to you lose the fear of the Lord. You know, it's just got like a frog in a, in a kettle. You turn it up real slow, and before you know it, that, that frog is being boiled, and it didn't realize it. I mean, I, you know, just one little doorway. It, 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 my book, uh, I Need God Because I'm Stupid, is full of illustrations in my life where the devil came along to deceive me and hoodwink me to drag my soul to hell. You know, I know people say, well, I don't believe once you accept Jesus in your heart, you can never go to hell. You know what? I have talked to many backsliders that came back to Jesus, and they would, I would ask them, when you were in your backslidden condition, if you would have died, where would you, where would you have gone? Every backslider that has ever come back said to me, Pastor Mike, I would have gone to hell. But yet that's the message of in many pulpits of famous, famous preachers right now that we're all good to go. It don't matter what's in your cart. Are you kidding me? It does matter what's in your cart. And what's going to get this stuff out of my cart? Faith in truth. You will know the truth. Okay, God. That's it. I don't want that stuff in my cart anymore, God. I don't want anything in my cart that's not of you. I said anything in my cart that is not of you. And Lord, if it's not of you, show me it in your word. I want to see it in your word, not by your tradition, not by your theology, not by your understanding. I want to know it in the word. It's not. And Lord, I want in my cart your character, your nature, your personality, I only want to watch what you would watch. I only want to do what you would do. You, Pastor Mike, that's legalism. No, it's freedom. You're finally free. Listen, I believe in prosperity, but we've gone over onto the side of what we call covetousness, which is idolatry. Really, stop and think. Do I really, you know, Paul said, I don't want for any. Paul, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Now, if God blesses you with something nice, wonderful, he might just turn around and have you give it away to somebody. Ha has he ever done that? He's done it to me. He gives me something and says, give it away. You know, uh, like I said, as we close here, I had a, and, and then you got to have enough faith to say no. I had a woman come to me. Her, her, she worked for us. Her uh, brother was uh, uh, had a yacht down in Baltimore, a nice yacht that was in dry dock, and came to me and said, Pastor Mike, now, I know in the natural I could have probably took it and sold it, but I didn't want the temptation. She said to me, she said, Pastor Mike, I have a nice yacht, and I just want to give it to you. And right away in my mind, I saw myself out in uh, Baltimore Harbor with my wife and my kids in the storm drowning. And she said to me, she said, Pastor Mike, I want to give you my, my it's a big yacht. All you got to do is pay for the, the dry dock. And I said, and out of my mouth, I said, no, I don't want your yacht. I had another guy from Mississippi that came, and he wanted to give me a 110-foot tugboat. And I heard the Lord say to me, no, don't take that tugboat. I turned the tugboat down. I had another person who approached me and was going to give me a dual prop plane, Cherokee or something. And, 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 and I heard the Lord say, if you get that plane, you and your whole family will die in it. Now, what's in the spirit of fear? This being led by God. I said, I don't want your Cherokee plane. Thank you. Faith will rise up and say, no, I don't want that. I don't need that. I don't have to have that. And when I did let faith rise up and say, no, I don't need to watch that. I don't need to listen to this. You know how many people listen to gossip and it destroys their lives? We had a young man that was just here, you know, about a couple months ago. A lot of people don't know what happened to him. A wonderful guy who said he was on fire for God. Well, he, he got around people in the back that I take care of, and they're full of gossip, and they're full of strife, even though we blessed them, we provided for them, we help them. And he began to be filled with all of this gossip. He'd come, Pastor Mike, they said you're doing thus and thus and thus. I said, listen to me, brother. I said, why are you listening to that? Why are you listening to gossip? 
I said, it will get into you. It will destroy you. It will separate you. He told me, I know the Lord told me I'm going to be here for at least three years. Within a matter of weeks, he was gone. Oh, people, what's in our cart? If it's not of God, it's time to get it out. Now is not the time to play games. You're going to have to die. Your flesh is going to have to die. Now listen, don't go on a crusade. Don't be peeking in people's carts. Don't go home and say, you heard what Pastor Mike said. No, leave them alone. Pray for them. 